as any regular or even irregular listener of the show knows, uh, I'm Bernie Sanders' writer, too. So anytime we talk about Bernie Sanders, I bring that up so you can filter my opinions accordingly. But a lot of people are asking this week, what happened in Nevada at the Nevada Democratic Convention? There were a lot of different reports, a lot of wild stories. Uh, We're going to talk to somebody who right now, who was there. Samantha Silverman is a young person who says she wants to get involved in the political process. She was there. She um, wrote about it for medium.com and she is going to give us her experience now. Samantha, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolutely. Now, you wrote this piece for Medium, From Caucus to Convention, The Democratic Disappointment. Uh, so what happened? Um, well, right from the start, it was kind of just a disaster. Like, even from the beginning, we knew that this was not going to go well, uh, which was almost to be expected from how the county convention went which was another mess of miscommunication, um, people being upset and not being heard and fighting, kind of fighting back against the convention leaders. So, so, so we, just, just to, ahead. yeah, just, I'm, I, just because it is so confusing. Um, so you wanted to represent Bernie Sanders in this process, right? Yes. And yeah. and so it begins. It's convoluted in Nevada, but it begins by you go to a county convention and there you go through this process and you get elected and then you, you get to go to the state convention. Is that it? Uh, technically, uh, there's actually three different tiers, which just makes it even that much more confusing. There's the caucus first, which is held, you know, lo- like in local high schools or any small place, and that's where the first set of delegates is selected. And then there's the county convention where you kind of do the same thing over again. And then there's the state convention where yet again, you do the same thing over again. So there's the three different steps to the Nevada process. So you went to the caucus Mm -hmm. and you got elected to the county convention, is that it? Yes. And uh, and that was, went smoothly and was a lot of fun, right? smoothly but it was interesting it went a lot better than the other two have gone i'll say that but it was still a long process and no one really knew what they were doing so it's very disorganized and kind of just a that was the general theme of this entire primary season for us yeah. i was actually being a little sarcastic there samantha because you wrote that uh, you, <laughs> you you went nine straight out but you're very diplomatic i appreciate that you, you you wrote that we went nine straight hours without food or water witnessed votes held during and this is at the county convention witnessed yes. votes held during a quote-unquote lunch break while people were out of the room and received misleading emails from the convention organizers telling us we didn't have to show up at all yeah. So that one, that one was actually the scariest thing that happened because, I mean, to be told by your leadership, hey, if you do this, then you don't have to come and we'll hold votes without you. That was probably the, the sketchiest thing that's happened so far for me, at least. Now, do you know, did everybody get this or just Bernie supporters or you don't know? Uh, you know, that's actually a good question. I don't know, because I think that everyone received it, um, but... I mean, there's there's really no way to verify that. So it's kind of like a Darwinian. They're trying to weed out the gullible. Oh, uh, yes. This There was a lot of just a lot of misinformation that was extremely discouraging at every single step of the process. For instance, um, both the county convention and the state convention were organized on Eventbrite, which is, you know, it's a convenient way to get people to register. But there was a mandatory registration fee for the ticket. Um, And if you read the small fine print in the event description, you'd see that it's not actually mandatory. You can request a waiver, but to have that fee to at the, at the starting point for me, was almost offensive because it was like, they were telling me I have to pay to vote, which is super undemocratic and discouraging for anyone that didn't have, the time or maybe energy to put forth the extra effort to get that fee waiver. Well, you know, uh, of course, these kinds of rules don't apply to uh, political parties, but the poll tax during uh, segregation in the South was found to be unconstitutional, and that's where they were paying, asking people to pay to vote down there. Just out of curiosity, how much was it? 
The county convention was, I believe, $27, and the state convention was 35 Yeah. So it was just the principle of it more than anything else, right? Oh, yeah. Do. Um, so, and we're talking with Samantha Silverman, who uh, has been through the notorious Nevada uh, delegate selection process. So you said every single step was a, a nightmare. You went to the uh, county uh, convention, and then you uh, went to the state convention, which was held on the Las Vegas Strip at a major casino. Yeah, which, I mean, as soon as we saw that, we were just kind of asking, like, my friends who also went to the convention, who were, we're all locals, you know, we're all from Vegas, we know the disaster that is the Las Vegas Strip, and the idea of trying to bring everyone from the entire state of Nevada to the strip was just bewildering because we knew there was no way they were going to be able to accommodate the numbers, the traffic, the just there there was no way it was going to work and it didn't. We we knew that right from the get go. So uh yeah, okay. So it wasn't well organized and look, you know, I mean it's 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 uh it's a shame that it wasn't well organized, but it seems that it went beyond that. And of course, we've, you know, the videos have been circulating online. The accusations have been circulating all around. Um, you said you left early after 13 hours, which is a pretty long time. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you said that at that point you were six hours behind schedule with three major votes still left on the table. Uh so this was uh, what what were all the different votes about how many votes did you need what took so long oh man there were i mean because of the the way that the caucus process is designed we have to first approve the rules for how the convention will be held which was the first hold up because we did not want to approve the rules because we were not happy with them but you know you vote on the rules you vote to accept the delegate count you vote for uh, we were voting for board um, um, placement, like people that were running to be on the uh, the board. Uh -huh. And we also voted for district delegates and then uh, political and, oh, I forget the acronym. It's They called it PLEO the whole time. Uh, so that level of delegate and the at-large delegates. And we also had to vote to pass the party platform. So... Uh you know, I have to say, I mean, I have a little bit of uh, of ADD, so uh, <laughs> I, w I couldn't handle it personally. I mean, I just I'm not proud of that, but, but <laughs> it would be really, really, really tough for me. But you hung in there. And then there was this whole issue of uh, the chair. I forget her name. Lang, I think. Roberta Lang. Uh, Roberta yes. Lang. Yeah, I was thinking of, you know, uh, there was another Dorothea Lang, who is a but, but yeah, Roberta <laughs> Lang, and and so so there was a whole issue where you know supposedly she shut down a voice vote. Were you were you gone for that whole part of it? Uh, you know, she shut down a lot of things. There was the voice vote at the beginning for the um, for the rules. She outright said, "I've made a decision, and it cannot be challenged." So that vote was shut down um, when we were calling for a standing division of the room to take a better vote. Um, but towards the end, when she had voted down the motion for a recount, I wasn't there for that. And that's where, so you weren't there when we're, the security guards or deputies or whatever they were were called in, right? Right. So that I was there when they brought them into my district level delegate elections. Um, they were again trying to protest for a proper conduction of the elections and instead of hearing them speak they brought in some armed guards to settle everyone down was that the county uh... no that was still at the state convention okay. that was just the the delegate uh, for the district level so they brought them in at multiple times to, uh, oh, yeah yeah they kind of had them everywhere that doesn't yeah uh, that doesn't seem you know uh, conducive to democracy and by the way there were a, or a comfortable feeling i guess there were a lot of tensions in the room a lot of tensions between the clinton and, and sanders supporters uh i've watched the video there were a lot of stories that chairs were thrown apparently no chairs were thrown um but there was yelling there was you know obviously people got really angry and 
mm-hmm. said you know insulting things and said thol- insulting things to Ms. Lang later, which is, you know, to me, uh, completely wrong and unacceptable. Yeah. But your takeaway, uh, is, Samantha, you you participated in this process. You you said to learn and 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 to begin to get involved. And, but but uh, you you are like me in that you know you're worried about you know, and horrified by Donald Trump. You're not a Bernie mm-hmm. or bus person. But um, but you, you said this when you, at least when you wrote this Medium piece, that this changed your views a little bit about how you might vote uh, in the general election. And, and, and tell me, are, are you still thinking that? What were you thinking? What are you thinking? Well, I'm still conflicted. I will say that I haven't made a decision yet. But even though I've been caucusing for Bernie this whole time through all of this nightmare, I had still planned on voting for Hillary if she had won the nomination, but that was when I believed that she would win it through honest means and fairly, you know? And after what we witnessed at the state convention with all of the confusion and abuse of power and all that, I no longer believe that it will be done fairly. I feel like we have lost sight of the process and how it should be run. And so just on principle alone, I don't know if I can vote to support the way that our votes have kind of been undermined. So I feel like if I vote for Hillary now, it's kind of saying that stuff's okay. You can continue to do that. Yeah. you know, I'm not okay with that. Yeah, no, I understand. L- l- listen, I, I totally understand. And we're talking with Samantha Silverman, who was at the Nevada uh, Democratic Convention. Um, I totally understand at the same time, this is my biggest fear, because my biggest fear is that, you know, Donald Trump becomes president mm-hmm. because of these abuses of the process uh, along the way. And one of the things you describe uh, is you describe a, a, a high school student named Trevor McElroy, who, st- mm-hmm. he, who, who, who ran to be a delegate to the National Convention. He's 17. He sa- he asked him why he wanted to do this. He said, I, li- I, I just like politics. Uh, and then it, during his 30-second speech, uh, the the so-called adults said, "Go get a job." So, I mean, you know, we hear so much about the the abusive tone of Bernie supporters, and listen, I don't condone that. We don't hear about the abusive tone of uh, Hillary supporters. They're out there, trust me. And oh, yeah. um, I guess my biggest fear is that whether it's that tone or whether it's the abuse of the process and Debbie Wasserman Schultz and what she's done and so on, that that at the end of the day, millennials, you know, will be so and others will be so turned off that they won't uh, come out, especially in swing states and defeat Donald yeah. Trump. You have any advice or thoughts on that, on how to get people again, especially in swing states or states that might be up for grabs to come Very out. Important. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that right now the, the Democratic Party is kind of at a breaking point, sort of. It feels that way, where tensions are high for many, many reasons, and it feels like the party's being divided very clearly, and that poses a very real threat with Donald Trump winning the Republican nomination. So for me, at least, and for people my age group that I've been discussing this with over the last several months, um, we're trying to keep it in perspective and remember that even though we might not fully agree with either candidate, that we need to remember that, you know, this is the most important office in this country, possibly in the land, of course. And we have to take that seriously. We can't let divisive politics and a general upset and hurt kind of allow something dangerous to take place. And so that's where I'm caught in my my conflict is where I'm, I'm trying to keep that in perspective. I'm trying to remember that this is important. It can't be taken lightly. We shouldn't make rash decisions. And we should try to find at least some common ground that we can stand on so that we can find the best possible resolution to all the scary things that are happening in the country right now. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think that's well said. I also feel that we have to concentrate on building a movement and being inspired by what that movement can do. And that, you know, the election, the the election is just a tool. The vote, the vote, a vote for Hillary Clinton would just be a tool. Democrat Party is just a tool. But the real goal Mm -hmm. is to really transform the system so that this kind of thing never happens again. Yes. 
All right. Well, I think we are uh, of like mind there. Uh, keep thinking about it. Keep writing about it. And uh, please stay involved. We need your voice in there. So thanks for Samantha Silverman. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much. You bet. It was my pleasure.